This is Bloomberg Surveillance. This morning, do you work at a swank headquarters or one of the temporary spaces popping up all over the world? Good morning, everyone. This is Bloomberg Surveillance. I'm Tom. This is Bloomberg Surveillance. I'm Sarah Eisen here with Tom Keen and Scarlett Fu. Tom, the big question and the trend is how do you work? Do you work at an office? Do you work at the headquarters? Or do you work somewhere else? Certainly we yeah. know Yahoo's Marissa Meyer put limits on people working from home earlier. That caused quite the controversy. But many companies are doing the opposite. More and more people telecommuting, working by phones and coffee shops, and increasingly in what's called temporary and flexible offices. And this is a big business. It's a global business. It is a huge, huge business. We don't have a shop somewhere. What do we do? And we got to set it up. And that's exactly what we're going to talk about. Yeah, Regis is uh, one of the world's biggest providers of temporary workspaces. It works for companies. They want new flexible locations. It's real simple. You need to be in Riyadh Tuesday. What do you do? Mark Dixon can fix that for you. He is chief executive officer of Regis of London, and he joins us in our world headquarters in New York. Bloomberg uses your services. We need to disclose this. Love it. We, I need to go into a Brazilian city, not even Rio or Sao Paulo, another one. Globally, you're the go-to guy. How did you stumble into this business? Well, by chance. I had, uh, I had another business uh, in Brussels, in Belgium. Had difficulty getting an office. It was very hostile. Yes. Um, sort of customer service environment, dealing with the landlord. I thought there'd be an easier way. Started up the business with one site. And uh, 23 years later, uh, we're in 100 countries. What's the evolution right now? There's a distinction between 10 years ago and now. What's the new new in the demand for temporary space? Well, but it's absolutely different today. Um, we've still got the conventional demand, that is someone that needs a branch office in another country. But what we've seen for the past few years is the impact of technology. iPads, Blackberries, iPhones, and people working in a flexible and mobile way that don't need an office anymore. But they want something better than a Starbucks. So we started up three years ago drop-in locations. We're opening them up on highways, in airports, in office buildings, so that you can literally work anywhere for short amounts of time, work effectively. We've seen rising rents across New York City and everywhere. Have you had to raise your prices in tandem? We, our, our, our rates are related to whatever the rent is in the market. And um, we're seeing small rent rises in places like New York, but generally speaking, the global rent market is pretty flat at the moment. And rent is quite a small proportion of what we do. We're into flexibility, so you are renting space for exactly the time that you need it. So it's, it's much, much cheaper than having it permanently in any, in any case. I was your uh, tenant when I was running a little hedge fund, and of course there are a lot of other hedge funds on the same floor. What kind of flavor do you get in terms of demand? Where are the, where's the momentum now in terms of people who want these that are not branch offices, but single locations? Um, well, the, 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 I mean, the demand is global. We, we are operating in 100 countries. People are quite surprised that, you know, we've doubled the size of our business in Greece. Uh, we're in the process of doubling it in Spain. Because what happens at this point in the economy when things are distressed, mm -hmm. people try new things. Mm -hmm. Companies change the way they work. That's been happening in the United States, but it, and it's a worldwide phenomenon. Well, let's focus on Greece. I'm in Athens. I, I decidedly don't want to set up my own office, my own operation. I go to you. How big can your square footage be? Are you limited by if Bank of America with earnings out today, they want to go into Athens? Do you go, no, you guys are too big for us? No, no, we have... Um, our, our, the companies it uses are a mix between very large corporations yeah. and startups. You know, these are guys that are starting up with one person startup using us maybe a day a week to corporations that outsource their entire sales operation to us let me let me advertise for him uh, you can if you're a tenant in one location you have the privilege and opportunity to be anywhere in the world and instantly have an office that's right and the whole thing the base product is thirty dollars a month so it, it you know it, that gives you access to new york city or anywhere in the world. And you mentioned Greece and some of the hard-hit areas in Europe, and I know your business also really took off during 2009, during some of the troubles here. So is it economically sensitive? You do well when the economy turns worse? Well, we try and do well at all times, <laughs> but uh, uh, it's, we, we, we do well in times of stress. Right. Um, it's more difficult for us to grow when the economies are very hot. 
We tend to slow down our growth, don't open as many locations. Can I rent from you the tape machine so that when someone calls up, it sounds busy in the background? You, we, everything, do, do they, everything you would have in your own office, we file, provide that. File doors slamming and, and all that? Absolutely. Oh, my like God, we're so busy. Hold, would you hold line four, please? <laughs> Tell Cairo I'll get to them at 10 a.m. <laughs> All right, Mark Dixon, you're going to stick around. We're going to talk to you a little bit more about real estate. In the meantime, we have some company news. Yeah. Well, very quickly, we'll Mark, Di Mark Dixon, Regis CEO, you're expanding in the United States. Why? Um, we, it's a great market. Companies are changing the way they work here. They're using new software, uh, new hardware more effectively than anywhere else in the world. Well, there you have it from a business leader himself. We're going to continue to talk to you, Mark Dixon, and also talk about the commercial real estate in general. It has been booming. But there's some warning signs like higher rates on the horizon. Tom? Uh, futures mixed right now. Just a big churn to the market, not only today, but for the last three days. And commercial real estate, there's a big churn now, a lot of movement in New York City. And in London, there is a square footage. And then there are Rhode Islands of square footage. Think the Wells Fargo Tower, the KPMG Tower. Those two alone are 2.6 million square feet. Dennis Friedrich is the chief executive officer of Brookfield Office Properties. He brings us perspective on skyscrapers. Also with us, and this is really cool, Mark Dixon, CEO of Regis, they are people that have temporary office space, flexible offices, and he takes space from Brookfield. Also joining us, Robert Albertson of Sandler O'Neill, who once took space from Regis. So we go from Albertson <laughs> to Dixon to Friedrich, and Sarah will explain it all to you. And we're going to put you, you in a temporary road. office space soon. Yeah, well, here we are. Uh, how is business? I look at skyscrapers around New York City or where I travel. Some look booming, but then some don't. It's, uh, the business is, is, is very good in terms of particularly capital values and the capital markets. Values are at a peak, uh, back, back to the peak levels of, of 06. Uh, a lot of demand for, for corporate real estate throughout the markets, and at the same time, the leasing markets are improving and sort of kicking into the next gear. There are trophy properties we all know in every city. What are the skyscrapers doing just below those trophy properties? Those have also trended up in value. There was definitely a, a movement more towards the prime cities, the prime assets, but the secondary markets and some of the B assets as there's been a, a major imbalance between demand for corporate real estate assets and supply. Those values have also been going up and cap rates have been going down. Well, higher interest rates is something we're all expecting at some point. In fact, we've seen it over the last few weeks. What does that do to the value of commercial real estate? We haven't seen any uh, immediate impact over the past few weeks, and we've been actively buying and selling assets pretty, uh, pretty aggressively th uh, throughout the year. Uh, we've been operating in a, in a great interest rate environment. We expect that to continue. We do expect interest rates to go up, but so how that is healthy that? to an extent. Uh, putting in long-term uh, debt on your properties, uh, that's a big part of our strategy. We like long-term fixed rate debt. We head some of our uh, interest rate situations, but uh, what comes with interest rate increases is also, also healthy job fundamentals and demand for space. Net clean within a REIT, how much basis points do I pick up with a skyscraper versus a mall or a strip mall? In terms of categories, what does a skyscraper give me? In terms of yield differential? Yeah. Or uh, were uh, skyscrapers about 50 basis points or so above in yield uh, versus prime retail and, Why and is high stride. Uh, part of it is uh, fluctuation in, in demand versus the view in certain retail uh, properties and portfolios that there's more steady demand, although obviously sales and rents can move around mm -hmm. a bit. Uh, Mark Dixon at Regus, when you go to a guy like this, this, this Friedrich guy over here, he's your headache, isn't he? Well, no. How do you, what do you do? You go, hey, that building, building over there is empty. I want X thousand no, square feet. We generally work jointly with the owners and investors in property. Um, we, our job is to manage part of that operation. We're seeing more and more owners of property and investors that want to get into this flexible market. They need someone to do it for them. That's what we do. Interesting. Interesting. We call this phenomenon that we've been seeing in the labor market part-time America, the increase of part-time jobs instead of full-time jobs. I would think that that would be helpful to your business, which is sort of part-time office space. Yeah, it, it is. And it's, um, you know, it's interesting, some of your questions. The, the, there's going to be a massive change in the next five years in the whole real estate market in the United States. So what do you see it to be? Well, it's, it's, it's actually going to polarize into the metropolises, places like New York City, going to become more popular. 
because they're going to become more flexible. You can have lots of different product. More people can use it. In the suburbs, though, um, there'll be less demand for real estate as companies uh, work more flexibly. More people work from home. More people use drop-in. Mm -hmm. um, we've seen that happen in Europe. In some countries, there's a surplus of uh, suburban real estate, office real estate that's been converted to residential, right. for example, already. Dennis, I'd be irresponsible if I didn't ask about downtown New York. We see the topping of the new tower, all the emotion of that here 13 years on from 9-11. The state of skyscrapers in downtown Manhattan. Uh, very, very good state right now. Very importantly, uh, what is coming online, in, in addition to topping off of some of the, the trade center development, is within the next 12 to 24 months, we're going to have uh, a major uh, delivery of infrastructure, transportation infrastructure in Lower Manhattan. Uh, two new transportation hubs, uh, and that is as critical as topping off of certain of certain projects down. And I know you have a big project on the west side of yeah. Manhattan that you're very excited about. I'm curious, are you trying to diversify away from Wall Street, from financial and banks as your main customers? Uh, not necessarily. I think it's important for us just to, we've diversified globally. Uh, we want to continue to diversify across tenant base as much as possible. Uh, we do expect that over time uh, the uh, financial services engine will start to kick back in. We're starting to see profitability uh, picking up uh, quite noticeably. And, so. and that brings us to Robert Albertson, our yeah, guest one, host. One yeah. quick question. Yeah. Um, is the demand here in the U.S. going up because of migration out of Europe for certain companies? Not in a major way, uh, I wouldn't say. I think the demand here, in, at least in the urban cities, because the demand has been, been bifurcated, as Mark indicated right now. Uh, the urban centers of, of New York, Los Angeles, San Francisco are definitely enjoying a much higher level of demand because there's been an urban trend in terms of residential there's that continues. Domestic, yeah. It's a domestic with, with you as a real estate pro, when you walk around New York City, we see great properties we, and, and trophy properties, iconic historic properties, but I see a lot of first floor real estate in stores is darkened. Did, where, where are we going to be in bricks and mortar retail at the bottom of all your skyscrapers Office in five available. years? <laughs> right. There is actually an interesting, uh, and I've seen it with some of Mark's projects as well, actually, on the way into the studio today, uh, that there's going to be pockets of, of very high demand retail. Retail is actually at a peak in terms of rental and value in, in, in a number of avenues and corridors. But in other areas, I think that uh, commercial landlords need to reinvent the experience. What are you going to do? Are you going to put Regis temporary offices that, or, on the first floor? Or our own type of experiences. What we're finding is the, 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 the younger creative class likes actually an interactive experience at the lower levels, at the lobby levels, at the common areas. One of the major things we're doing with the redevelopment of Brookfield Place downtown right. is to actually reinvent. Okay. It used to be lobbies into All you need to do areas. is put on every single first floor lobby the word artisanal. <laughs> That's all you got to do. You don't have to do anything. It can be artisanal this, artisanal Brooks Brothers, whatever it is. That is good This advice. is great. Dennis Friedrich, thank you so much. Mark Dixon, thank you with Regis. Well, here now with our artisanal.